Oh god, that's vile. Joys of working in garages. Hi guys, Lee here, welcome back to the channel and you join me today as we're going to have a look at another one of my purchases. Now it's another Hyundai i20 1.2 petrol, this one's a 2010 plate uh, which we have bought for £900. Now I've bought this as it's come off a friend of mine, a dealer, in part exchange. The car's been laid up for quite a while, not being being used. I have had a quick listen to it, it seems okay to be honest, it is covered in mould inside and out, it's not in great shape, it does need a good ballot. Um, so we have got the car back to the workshop now and the first thing we've done is stuck a battery on it, clean the seat up and blast off the bodywork quickly just so we can get a better picture of the bodywork, make sure we've got no nasties or anything like that. Now I actually think there's a bit of money in this, so we've done 95,000 miles on a template, so the car's here now, we've got it running on the button, so we're going to have a quick look round of it, go for a drive, get in the workshop and get a list together of what we need to do to this Hyundai and hopefully look to turn it around and sell it and make some money out of it. So let's go have a quick drive and look round the little i20. Right, here we are guys, the little Hyundai i20. Now obviously like I said we've cleaned her all up because she was uh, filthy dirty. It's still really quite rancid inside. We'll just clean the seat down so we can obviously just have a quick sit around in it and uh, have a bit of a test drive. So obviously we do need to uh, valet this properly. But we're not going to valet that, that's the last thing we're going to do because we're going to get the, uh, the dirty things underneath and uh, try and get it right. So like I said, 2010 plates are 1.2 petrol. Same engine really as we had in the white one we had on the channel uh, a few about a month or two ago. Uh, this one, uh, that one actually has got a uh, engine management light fault, we're going to cover that in another video because that's uh, had a bit of progression since we last viewed it. But this one uh, seems to start alright, but it has got a few warning lights on the dash, but we'll go into that in a minute because we're going to have to diagnose that and find out what actually is wrong with it. But first of all, let's have a go, quick sweep round it. Um, dirt aside, got a little scuff there, but that's just a rubber mark, that'll come out. We've got a little few chips there, nothing too major though for a car that's done, I think it's 92 or 95 foul, we'll have a look in a sec. Wings nice and straight, tyres there's obviously clean up, little tiny bit perish, which is not too bad, a little cheap budget Ravello on there. Obviously the car's been laid up for quite a while, so we've got very, very dirty brakes. So we're gonna have to see how it drives first. If it does drive reasonably okay, it might just be a strip and clean job on the brakes. Uh, worst case obviously we'd have to replace them, but uh, I think we might get away with a strip and clean. They don't look too bad, as in not much of a lip on them and the pads I can see from here don't look too bad either. But we'll see when we drive it. If we need to put brakes on it, we will. Going on to the door, not too bad on the door. We've got a little bit of flaking around these handles here, which is a shame. See that quite a lot, to be honest, on the high 20s. We might just see what we have to do with them. We'll see what we can do potentially with that. We might have to um, look at doing something with that. Maybe we'll have a look, um, even if we just have to sort of just dress it up a little bit. Uh, very straight on the sides as well. Again, on the handle, just a little bit of chip on the side there. But nice and straight overall, not too bad. Going on to the quarters, decent. Bumper corner down here. We've got obviously a mark there. Again, we might need to address that. Worst case scenario, if we budget can afford it, uh, we'll paint it. We might just touch it in, maybe. We'll, don't know. we'll see how we go. Sometimes we can pencil something in and make it look 10 times better. Looking at the back, actually, saying that, we've got quite a bit of a few marks. Starting to crazy pave a few marks on the bottom of this uh, back bumper here on the boot side. So, it might be worth painting it, maybe, because if we're going to flash that in, we might as well do that corner because we ain't going to blowing all that side in anyway. So, we may end up putting a uh, either a bumper on it in colour or certainly paint it again there we've got a bit of crazy paving going on there in the paint's cracked a few little marks so we're going to put that down potentially then for a, a bumper or painting we've got some um, uh, what I call twatty stickers on it um, not quite sure what that is is that I've, my daughter's got something that looks like that I think that's stitch not quite sure let me know in the comments what that is I'm going with that stitch whatever that cartoon is I'm not sure um, not sure what he is but uh, they're coming off they're not going to be staying on the car I've got a little bit of a mark up there a little tiny bit there a little bit of rust it's not terrible it's just someone's just caught it and it's just broke the paint we we'll just clean that up and maybe just nab dib that in another sticker there someone's gone mad with the old stickers but the rest of the uh, court is nice and clean again uh, tires on the back the wheels are a bit rancid they want to clean up a bit of acid on them tires that one's not too bad that's about five mil i can see from here Again, on the back that one's quite new actually um cheap budget tire good ride eight about seven mil on that so tires aren't so bad got a few little very 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 light scuffs here don't you quite tell to be honest with you that probably will mop up or, and certainly improve but for the age of the car nothing too bad handles on this side aren't too bad actually they're quite clean mirror caps are good tire on the front matching ravello to the other side Mm, some very minor perishing but it's not a bad tyre and it's got about four or five mil on it so that's not too bad either 
wing's not bad little mark here just touch that in nothing really to, to worry about there bonnet's nice and tidy trouble than a general clean and a wash and a polish up it'll actually look quite well i think really the only bit of paint we need to be looking at is the back bumper potentially just to sort of improve that a little bit and then just a bit of nibbing up is that some rust up there now no it's not it's just a bit of algae uh, yeah so we just definitely want a deep clean but actually i just blasted it off for now because it was that bad before you couldn't even tell what the paintwork was like underneath it like i said this has been laid up for a while as I explained earlier quick look inside i've just cleaned the seat off for now with a bit of g101 but the rest of it is rancid dirty we're gonna have to have a really deep clean in this get the shampoo on it Ooh, door's stiff not been opened in ages look at this mold all over the door cars all over the seats but a deep clean will get this back right the actual carpets and seats as in the material of them are actually quite decent we've got no rips or tears it's just dirty guys so we just want to clean up shampoo through we can redo the carpets maybe even, maybe even dye them again if they're, if they're off color we've got some carpet dye we'll make them all look brand new we're certainly not worried about getting this cleaned up Ooh, tailgate's been open for god first time and god knows how long Let's see if we've got any damp nice and dry in there that's good uh and we've got no water in the back which is decent as well that's a good sign jacks in there old spanner and a space saver tire not really much else going on in there quite sure for that notice this one as well the white one we had all rotten on the tailgate here this one's actually all good nick whether it's just an issue it seems to be white ones you ever see they all seem to be rotten here but this one's not too bad so right we've got two keys with this one uh, both working buttons are a little bit warm but yeah it's what it is isn't it you can buy a set of buttons for it off ebay for pence i'm sure over on the mole guys it's uh actually not too bad in here i mean obviously it's, it's hard to say that when you see all this mold which think what you're talking about but i mean the plastics are all there the switch gears switching all uh, the, the switch gearing's all here everything's here and it's, and it's doing what it should do obviously with the stereo's working heaters are working as well on all the settings which is good we've got air con obviously we'll have to check that works that's one of the last jobs we'll do it's not too bad i'm quite happy with this to be honest central locking works glove box is attached we're not getting issues there um five speed manual aux ipod usb down there everything you want on it it's a nice little equipped car got a few bits on it uh, you'd need in a car this size nice old thing so done ninety-five thousand miles it's like it's the 1.2 petrol we even got quarter tank petrol in as well which is oh, bob on a bit of petrol uh quick start it up let's have a listen on the button no issues there now we did have some warning lights on before it seems to have gone off now but i'm sure they'll come back on in a sec when we drive it uh engine wise sounds well got no engine management lights on no issues there it's no sounding reasonably well old bonnet obviously want to clean up under here um we've put a battery on it guys the battery was absolutely flat as anything as you can imagine being stuck around the back for such a long length of time so i had a really really good second hand battery i took off a scrapper uh, a while ago i just uh, put it on charge it was all fully charged anyway but we just put it on a quick charge and uh, it's starting it up no problem so we'll uh, we'll see how we go on with that for now but uh, certainly working and putting charge back in the battery yeah just want to clean really it's uh, not too bad little 1.2 hyundai engine it's a shame these the only thing they suffer with these as we've seen before on the channel is the timing chains can uh, stretch and cause uh, sort of camera shaft position sensor faults and eventually rough running uh, this one's actually seems all right sounds okay we've got no issues there but we'll see when we drive it hopefully it's all right it's hopefully it's all right when we drive it as well but really other than that they're quite a reliable engine it's only those chain issues that seems to be the main problem with them uh, that sort of cause a few problems i've seen these with big miles on 160 70 000 miles come in so they are a capable engine just that chain issue obviously can uh, become a prob problem for it and can be expensive to fix yeah just a general clean up under here we're not i'm not too concerned about anything else it's a high hyundai i20 they usually drive reasonably quite well okay so before i go for a drive in this i did notice before when i moved it round that it had an abs light on now it seems to have gone off however i suspect that it is going to come back on yeah we go it's back on straight away so we've obviously clearly got a fault here with the abs 
it's only gone about less than 10 mile an hour and it's already come on so we need to find out what that is because it could be something really straightforward like a sensor um, it could be something more serious maybe like an abs pump or module so we're going to need to scan that if it's an abs pump fault or anything like that that could be quite expensive we've got to obviously work out um, the budget on this what we're going to be spending on it okay so we'll plug in now and see what's going on with the abs system now what we're going to use today guys well of course we're going to use the old uh, top down machine the art diag 600 i've had this now for what best part of six seven weeks maybe even two months actually now we've had this now um cracking little bit of kit i have used this before actually actually on another i20 we used it on to diagnose that um chiming chain issue um be interesting on this today to see what it's like on the abs I've not really used it on ABS before. This the only thing I've used. I've done some DPF regens on this. Done loads of engine sort of diagnostics on it. Loads of service lights on it. It's been really really good on that. And actually something really interesting on servicing lights because this got me out of the crap a few weeks ago, um, which be, uh, really amazed me. I'll explain about more of that in a sec. Uh, but yeah, a little cheap machine. This um, really entry level sort of machine for amateurs or even garage mechanics. Just what a basic machine will do multiple tasks. It does all those things you need to do, it's like your, your service resets, engine lights, ABS problems like that, throttle bodies, stuff like that. Really decent machine. Handbrakes as well, use this on handbrakes, rear handbrakes. Um, you need to send the pistons back, brilliant for that. A lot of French cars have that. This has worked perfectly for that sort of thing. I don't think you can buy a better machine for less money. Um, and yes, it's free updates as well, which, you know, even most machines we've had in the past they cost more to update than this machine costs to buy and it's got free updates so can't rate this enough now we're going to use this on the abs now and hopefully it'll diagnose it we, there's nothing i've put this on over the last two months that it's failed on as in we've not it's not giving me diagnosis it's not worked or coming out any error codes or anything like that or not communicated so let's try it we'll see um see how we get on with it and see what's going on with this abs see what's hopefully hopefully it's a sensor if not um and it's something more serious we'll have to look, look at that we'll come to that bridge when we get there so let's plug it in okay so we're all plugged in um top don's all fired up so we've got the main screen here obviously we've got the uh, diagnosis we've got uh, repair info so you can actually get actually information on any faults that you find they've got like a database you can keep of uh, sort of common fault codes got the update button as well general obd scan in the right hand corner there that's just what i just throw a, a quick uh, engine management light scan on it but we need to go a bit more in depth for this so we're going to click into diagnosis and that should bring up actually manufacturer specific software of it uh, luckily hind eyes there look there we go so we're not too hard to find that one ask us if it's 16 pin or 12 pin to be honest you guys most modern cars all have 16 pin plugs and then we've got two options here we've got manual search automatic search and special function uh, special functions uh, would be like if you want to do that certain tests so for instance if you want to do like uh, a dpf test or uh, if you want to get to any particular live data or if you want to do uh, uh, it resets on oil lights if you've had oil service indicators you go into special functions there is obviously other options you can get on the main screen to go into them specifically uh, what we need to do today is just do a general scan of it and then select into abs itself now last time we did this we did automatic select and it actually found it straight away our last the white i10 the, the white i20 we used we'll go manual this time just so we can show that way because it's just too easy just to press automatic and find it for us um look give us usa or general area obviously this is an american car so you, it's a general area car because it's the outside of the united states and then we can just choose the model manually now like i said guys you can just press automatic and choose it for you um but obviously i've got the manual switch because occasionally you might get a case where it can't find it for whatever reason and obviously you can just manually search it so it just shows how you can actually find the specific car you need uh, so we're looking at i20 and the year is 2010 and the engine size we know this is a 1.2 uh, as far as i'm aware they only made 1.2 engine one model of that one so that's that one there and then we've got system selection so we can actually go into each individual part so if we want to go into ecu we can go into ecu if we want to go into abs module we can go into abs you can go into each individual part of the car if it's a diesel you go into the dps side but obviously we're going to just go to a general health report because that'll actually scan the entire car that'll then do a full report of each individual module so we're going through now with all the ecu testing that's all coming back fine Hopefully in a second we should find a fault with the ABS, all being well, there we go, we've got something coming up with electronic stability, that's built in with the ABS, so there seems to be our problems. So we're going to ESP, which is also part of the ABS system, and we've got some uh, results. So we've got a wheel speed sense of problem, uh, left hand no signal, uh, again rear left hand range performance intermittent, so we'll just click into that now. So we go into, into actually uh, ESP itself. 
when to read the fault codes we get more clear reading yeah so there we go guys so we've got c1208 and 207 one is intermittent basic performance um so it's dropping off signal and then we've got no signal at all invalid which is a left hand rear abs sensor so now on this it's uh, basically a hub you buy a new hub and that probably will resolve it but we can double check to make sure because obviously not guessing if we go out of this and then go on to re read data stream which is live data that will give us up individual things we can check so obviously we don't need to see if the abs lights on we can see that but if we go down we should be able to pick up individual wheel sensors on the car so here we go wheel speed sensors left front left rear right front right rear the best thing to do is just select all of these so you can actually see them working and you can actually work out which one isn't working and make sure the data is correct that it's given us we select them now we press this okay button on here okay and there we go now straight away we know there's something wrong because the uh, left rear which is what it said is faulty saying it's doing 157 miles per hour uh, which is clearly wrong because i don't think the car is even capable of doing 157 miles per hour in fact it isn't capable of it doing 157 miles per hour but it will be interesting to see now if we just um shut this door to and just basically just go forward a few feet we can actually see it's working operating so if i just move this car forward now There we go as we see straight away we can see the other sensors there are working absolutely perfect but the left hand rear one is doing absolutely sod all it's just basically stuck at that uh, that speed which is obviously incorrect so we've clearly got an issue there with that left hand rear uh, abs uh, sensor or in this case it's built into the hub so it's the actual hub itself is the problem uh, so we need to order one of them it's not too difficult to get hold of uh, and pretty cheap to be fair we probably pick one up for not a lot of money so another little win there for the top door machine cracking little bit of kit once again done exactly what it's supposed to do uh, quick story on this one actually why this has really come one of my favorite machines um we've been using this a lot i've been using this for service lights and stuff like that recently it's really good for that oh it's all good for all sorts of things but particularly with service lights because it's so up to date and we get a lot of new cars in um now we get a lot of fiat 500s in we service a lot of fiat 500s and fiat 500s are a bit tricky things to reset service lights on basically keeping it brief if you if the fiat 500 has gone to a main agent really over the last few years for a service that they're a bit sneaky and um, what tends to happen is is that they get, you get locked out of them so if you try and use a diagnostic machine like we using normally used to use an autel machine very popular machine very good machine but a lot more expensive i mean it's not as expensive as some other machines out there it's good value but it's not as good value as this top down machine um we usually use that and we've used them many times over the years put it on and sometimes it works and other times if it's locked out you can't actually get into it um there is a way around it if, if you've used one of the bosch machines the kts series they seem to work and manage to reset the fiat's even if they're locked out or obviously you need the main fiat software which obviously also the dealer has or specialist so we had a fiat 500 in the other week went to it put the hotel machine on like i said it's 50 50 sometimes it works it doesn't it didn't work it was locked out completely so what i usually do is I have a friend of mine who's around the corner he has a bosch machine i know works every time bit of a faff going around there but i can usually get it sorted from there get it reserviced the light turned off on it when we obviously done the service for a customer uh, but i thought no i'll try the top down machine you never know it'll take two minutes to see if it worked plugged it in and lo and behold it went through now it actually said it failed did it, when it did it i did the reset and it said failed but it didn't it actually did knock it out which is strange enough and then i tried it again we had another fiat 500 in this time it was on a bath one um and it worked on that as well uh, it actually reset and said it worked successfully and it did turn it out so on both occasions it actually did work even though on one of them it did say it didn't but it did actually reset the lights my old town machine couldn't get anywhere near it didn't touch it so um yeah good good little bit of kit i mean that's doing stuff that some machines at thousands of pounds aren't even doing so it's a cracking bit of kit if you want one guys and seriously i would recommend it if you just want to get a cheap diagnostic machine that will do the job um can do most of the stuff you want it to do um i mean come on i mean literally i mean a garage will probably charge you these days 70 80 quid for a plug-in fee for diagnostics you might as well get yourself one of these learn about them as well they're really easy to use dead easy um you can get hold of one uh, links in the description below i think about 130 odd quid they are if you're just checking the price if you check the link in the description you'll get the latest price from the vendor in the uk who supplies them please don't use anyone else use the vendor in the uk the main distributor for top don make sure you use the correct ones guys because you don't want you want to get the latest machine with the latest update and it's the correct one uh, don't again you don't end up with something that's not the right the genuine product so get yourself in the link description below it's the best price as well um click on that link and get yourself one ordered today right so we've uh diagnosed the abs fault uh, we've had a quick look around it i think we need to go for a test drive now 
So let's get the car rigged up and go for a drive. Right. Ugh. God. Got to wipe the belt down. Oh god, that's vile. Joys of working in garages. Mold, oil, shit. That horrible smell of mold you get in a car which has been left for ages, it's just oh I think I'll be needing a power washing down when I get back out of this. Right. We'll go, we'll go for a quick run in it. Um now I expect the brakes to be a bit noisy because they've been uh, stood for a while. They obviously got the ABS light and the ESP light on, but we know what that is, so we're not too concerned about that. Let's flip it round here. To be honest with you, it's braking then. There isn't really too much wrong with that braking. Um, we've not got any judders at the wheel or anything like that. It'll be interesting to see what happens when we get up to speed in a set, what it does. But engine wise, we're pulling well. Going through the gears nicely into third, into fourth. We've got no crunch or anything like that. Clutch is nice, got a nice bite on it, halfway up the pedal where it should be. Nothing really too worrying there. Brakes there. Yeah, we're doing okay actually. A little bit noisy, I think they'll clean up. Certainly got no juddering, which will be, uh, it's quite amazing actually for how long it's been stood for. They reckon it's been off the road for about 18 months, at least maybe even two years. Uh, suspension wise, it's not too bad. I can hear a little knock coming from something. Um, maybe that's maybe a ball joint or something like that. We'll maybe have to get out on the ramp and have a quick look at that because there isn't something right there. Um, but it's not all over the place. I mean, it's going around the corners fine. It's, we haven't got really any sort of any other noise to worry about. We don't clanging or anything like that. We just got a little bit of a tap somewhere, probably just a, like I said, a ball joint or something. Now I do like the i20. Uh, I do think it's a really good option for people. Uh, the 1.2 of all the engines, it's probably the worst one you can buy, um, purely because of that timing chain issue. So make sure when you get one, guys, you're going to go and look at one, go for a proper run in it. Make sure you've got no engine management light issues. If you've got any engine lights on in a 1.2, just keep well away from it, because the only thing it'll ever be is a timing chain issue. I mean, unless it's cheap, but you know you're going to be spending probably four, five hundred quid to have a timing chain done on one. So obviously, just uh, bear that in mind if you ever buy one, uh, just be careful on that. They obviously did these in other engines as well. They did a 1.4 version as well. That's not a bad little engine. That's not a good, that's a pretty good choice to go for. And obviously a diesel as well. But yeah, this one too, I mean, they actually pull quite well. They give quite good economy on them. Uh, not a bad little engine when it's when it's running right, when it runs right like this one. So then this is a good one. So I'm happy with this. It's pulling absolutely fine. I've got no misfires, no issues, no anything like that. I mean, the brakes are actually starting to clean up now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not too bad. So there isn't really too much I'm concerned about on the drive of it. We just need to get it on the ramp and have a look underneath. They do suffer with um, corroded str struts in particular. I've seen a few of these over the years where they fail on MOT for the actual McPherson struts rotting and corroding. That is quite common. It's going to need a really good service, this guys, because I would say we've got a bit of history with it. It's got partial service history, so it's just like staggered a few bits here, a few bits there. Nothing really substantial. So we're going to have to go through it properly, get a proper service on it, full service kit, do all the oils and filters and plugs, etc. Make sure it's right, put a flush in it because it's probably not had a, an oil change in God knows how many years and start getting it back into some sort of reasonable shape. Uh, what's this worth? If we can get it to half decent nick, it could potentially be worth sort of 23, 24, 95. Uh, very similar price to what the white one we had in a few uh, weeks ago. That had more miles on it, it was a newer car. I mean, that had done about 120 or thousand miles. It was on a 14 plate. This is done considerably less, it's only done 95,000. So it's on the right side of 100 but it's obviously a few years older. So they're gonna be sort of similar-ish money, to be honest with you. But that's the end game. We need to get there first. We need to get it in the workshop, get it underneath, check it all over, make sure we've got no nasties or anything like that or any corrosion to deal with, uh, and then start getting a compiled list together of what we've got to do. So uh, I think that's what we need to do now, guys. There's not much else we can do here. It seems to be driving reasonably okay. So we'll get it in the workshop now and uh, start the process of working out what we need to do to this little I-20. So let's get it in the workshop. Okay, so we've had the little Hyundai in the workshop. What have we found? Well, let me pull over, go through what we need to do to it and what it's going to cost us to try and fix this little I-20. Right, okay, so the little I-20, where are we at with it? Well, let's say I've had it up in the air. Um, I've checked it over. There's a couple of things that I've picked up. Um, first one, actually, there's the uh, to do with the noise. Now, when we're driving it, it had a bit of a noise on the suspension. Nothing too serious, just a little knock-knock now and then. Um, I thought it might be a ball joint. 
uh, and something like that or a trap red end maybe turns out not to be the case when i checked it up and jacked it side to side when I, when I jacked it up and give it a bit of the old side to side actually everything was quite solid on that front all trap red ends ball joints were all good um, so i scratched my head a little bit and then realized actually the, the problem might actually be in the steering rack itself i've had a few of these mot over the years and i've got a few of them where they've actually the steering rack internally sort of starts to break down you get a knocking noise they'll probably demonstrate that to you now guys actually if i start this up might be able to pick it up on the camera I'll just move this from side to side now, rock the steering, and you'll hear it. Now, when I'm hard standing now like this, it's really obvious. Now, it isn't so obvious when you're driving, but when you're hard standing with the weight of the wheels side to side against the tyres, it's pushing that rack in and out and cut, and you can hear that play. So, obviously, that's going to need addressing. Um, it's the actual internal part of the rack that's gone. I've checked the bottom of the column, that's okay. It is just the rack. Like I said, we've quite common actually on these. I've forgotten about actually this common fault that occurs on I-20s. Uh, and it's uh, basically a rack job. You need a new steering rack for it. Uh, new steering rack for one of these is about 150 quid for a reconditioned rack, which will sort it out. I mean, we could get a second hand one for about half that pretty pointless to be honest with you we're going to be selling it to someone if we sell it to someone then six months later it starts knocking again or you know we, we could just end up with it back again it's not it's not the point there's no point doing going down that route most of them do it anyway there's no point sort of putting a second hand one on it just get a new reconditioned one and that should outlive the car so i'm gonna to have to order a new steering rack um other than that actually suspension wise was actually very very good um i'm going to change the uh, strut on the uh, front uh, particularly the offside one um it's badly corroded now someone at some point has changed Changed the opposite side that isn't too old um, I imagine it's probably failed MOT or something like that or maybe a broken spring and they've just decided to change that strut probably a few years ago because the car's been stuck for that long um, and then obviously this side's been left that one's matching up I usually change up in pairs but that one's not too old anyway it's already been done so really I think we could probably get away with just changing that right side I mean technically it probably would still pass an MOT but it would certainly be advised on McPherson strut being quite badly corroded it's not it's not going to last very long to be honest with you um, I'd rather just change it anyway so we're going to so we're going to do that we're going to order a new strut for the right hand side and replace that side with a new drop link and top mount as well other service items we need to do well we need to obviously give it a service oil change so we need to get some uh, oil filters and uh, air filters and plugs uh, and put a flush in it as well because i don't know when the oil's last been changed uh, we also need to strip down the brakes they've cleaned up quite well actually um i've been out on the road no judge or anything like that they're all right so i think we'll probably get away with just a proper strip down strip them down just get all the gunk off and all the rust and then put them back together it'd be good to strip these brakes down because hyundai's in particular do suffer with seized calipers we do a lot of them particularly rear calipers that seize up um so it'd be just good now just to get them stripped down push the pistons back take all the slider bolts out as well they can jam up just grease everything up and get it all nice and free it's been stood for years anyway and they are renowned for sticky calipers so we can just make sure they're all good obviously we need to deal with the abs problem on the back uh, I have actually ordered a hub offline. I've got a hub ordered on the way. I've used these a few times before for customers. Perfectly fine, no issues with them. No issues with them at all. I mean, quite good units I've bought. So I was ordered, I'd ordered one online. Simple job, it's not gonna to take too long. We should be able to get that ABS light out uh, and, then, and then make the car all nice and safe again. Washers don't work, but the actual motor's working, so it's probably just a simple blockage that's easy to fix. We need to get rid of those stupid stickers off it and uh, give the paintwork a bit of a buffing and mopping over. Uh, and obviously give it a deep clean inside. Uh, Valeters need to do a proper job on this. It's a proper steam clean job, I think, on these seats and all these plastics to get rid of this horrible mould and get the car looking 100% again. Now, once we've done that, we can maybe look at tackling the paint. To be honest with you, what I'm probably going to do with this, guys, is uh, look. I've looked online, look for a second hand bumper. It's probably the best option. If we can find a second hand bumper in colour, silver's quite a popular colour in the i20. So I'll probably get a second hand bumper, we'll probably pick one up for about 80 to 100 pounds, and we can just bolt that on. Worst case scenario, you'll have to go to paint. Uh, that might cost a bit, a bit more. It probably could cost us about 150 to 200 to have that back bumper done. So we might have to do that if we can't find a decent enough second hand bumper. I'm not just going to go buy any old second hand bumper that's got just as many marks as what we've got. We've got to buy something that's half right. If we can't find one, then we'll have to go to paint. So we'll factor that in when we come to it. For now, we're going to focus on the mechanicals and then we can obviously work on the paint side later. But we're definitely going to need to sort that bumper out nonetheless and then touch a few little bits up as well. And then just give it a bit, just a mop and buff up and it should come up pretty well and ready for sale so we've got quite a bit to get on with there we've got to get a rack on it we've got to get that abs sorted we've got to get a bumper sorted we've got to get a deep clean done on it basics we've got to get a service kit put through it we've got to get a strut sorted out for it there is a bit to be getting on with and brakes as well we've got to strip them down and clean all them up so we've got plenty of work to be getting on with this one certainly not one we're going to be able to cover in this video uh, so we're definitely going to have to have do this cover this in a part two i think it'd be well worth doing to be honest 
it'd be nice to see it turn around and looking its best again. Still loads of life left in this, 195,000 miles, and it actually drives reasonably all right for a car that's been laid up and neglected for a few years. So it'd be nice to turn this one around. Uh, we just touched on values before, Hopefully we can get 23, 24, 95. That would be the end game for it. But we've got to get it to that point. So we're going to start on the process of getting them bits ordered and get start on it next week and start to turn. So start to turn around the car. Cost-wise, well, at the moment we paid £900 for it and we basically chucked on a second-hand batch that we've had lying around anyway that's uh, pretty decent. So we haven't really spent much on it, to be honest with you. I've ordered that wheel bearing. Um, that's not a great deal of money. It was all about 30-odd about quid or something like that, I remember rightly. Maybe a bit more than that. I'll put the price down on the screen below. Uh, and that's really it. I haven't really anything else more, more for it. We've got to get the rack, 150 quid. We might spend 100 quid on a bumper if we're lucky. Um, we're going to need a service kits and bits and bobs and plugs like that. That could be another 50 quid there for a full whack of that. Brakes, luckily, we're going to strip them down and clean them. Hopefully, we'll get away with that and uh, we don't need to put any new brakes on it. If it's just a strip and clean, that would save us a bit of money. And we need to get a strut as well. I imagine we're going to be able to pick up a, a new strut for about 50 quid, top mount kit and a few other bits and bobs. Might spend about 80, 90 pounds getting all that. So we could be spending roughly around three or 400 quid on this, potentially. Um, it might go a bit more if we have to get the bumper painted rather than if we can't find one in colour. But there's money in it, you know, worst case scenario, even if it comes in at 1,500 quid we've got, and we've got a decent car at the end of it, then great. You know, we've got a nice margin in there um, and we can price it a bit more sensibly as well. So we'll cover this in another video, so please check that out. Please also check out my other videos as well. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, guys. It does help me out immensely. We are trying to push now to 20,000 subscribers, which I'm really, really proud of. And I thank you all who subscribed to the channel previously. It does mean a lot to me. Uh, so thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you all very, very soon.